Hello, welcome to another video and happy new year. This is the first video of the year, so I hope 2022 is good to you all. Today is a video I'm really excited for. We're gonna be installing some software on the iMac G3, as well as a few files that I've already loaded onto there. I'm especially excited for these. These are some CDs that I've burned. They're all abandonware, so the legality of it is kind of a gray area. You can't even buy this stuff anymore, so this is the only way to get it. So I'm gonna take you through the installation of a whole heap of software, including Photoshop 7, Office 98, and Civ 2. Let's get started, shall we? So I think I'm most excited to try Photoshop. This is Photoshop 7.0.1. This is the last version that'll work on Mac OS 9. So I think I'm gonna try this one first. In goes the CD. I burnt this with my iMac G5. Ooh, we've got some OS 10 folders here. That looks kind of out of place. <laughs> just tried to open the README and it looks like we can't use PDFs at the moment. So I'm just gonna double click install Adobe Photoshop. Again, sorry for the flicker on the screen, guys. If you look at the video for a while, you can kind of tune it out. Didn't even read that. There could have been something funny in there. Oh, serial number. Okay. On my iMac G5, I do actually have the serial number. Let's see how we go with that, shall we? Hey, there we go. It likes it. Continue. I wonder if we can get a date on this README agreement. There we go. 2002. It's going into applications. Install. If you guys are enjoying these classic software adventures, I'll get the Power Mac G4 going so you don't have to stare at the CRT the whole time. I'll be able to use my capture card if I do it that way. Installation was successful. Click Stop. Click. Okay, good. <laughs> it's started speaking to me there. I have no idea why. Photoshop, there we go. Oh, that launched way quicker than I thought it would actually. What is this? Registration. No. Color settings, configured using default settings. Yeah, cool. File, new. We'll just do a 640 by 480. Hey, this is pretty snappy. Layer, new. There we go. I don't know how far you would get in the way of actually altering pictures, but it looks like all the effects and things are there. There we go. I've just generated some clouds. That didn't take too long at all. Let's make the clouds a different color, shall we? Let's see if we can gradient tool that. Maybe put the opacity down a little bit. Everything's in the right place by the looks of it. I have used Photoshop before, the modern version. I've also used GIMP and I am very confident that if I had to use this program, I'd be able to find my way around it. Obviously, when you start dealing with higher file sizes and lots and lots and lots of layers and effects and things it's got to render, you're going to start to run into some slowdowns. Blur mode. Yeah, you've got all these normal blur modes. Hey, that looks pretty cool. <laughs> it looks like space, I guess. This can be our stars layer. Oh, Oh yeah, doesn't this look gorgeous guys? Leave a comment down below if you would definitely hire me as your graphic designer. And that could be my new desktop wallpaper. Why the heck not? Let's save as .psd, no, stars.jpg. How do I browse? Okay, there's no browse button. I reckon we can just go to documents and just kind of drag it on there. Yes, you can, I knew it. Isn't that beautiful, guys? So that was Photoshop and our lovely new wallpaper. Next up, I'm gonna try Office 98. And I'm really enjoying loading software from disk at the moment. It just seems appropriate, you know? To install Office, just copy this folder to your hard disk. I'll go Macintosh HD, Applications, and I'll just drag Microsoft Office into the applications. I really like the way that most applications are presented on Mac. So you often get these nicely labeled folders, whether it's on a disk or a disk image, but it looks like that's been a bit of a tradition all the way back to here and possibly further. I'll have to check that out. And I just love how it guides you through everything. There's an RTF file here. I'm not sure. Maybe that's the serial number. That's not as slow as I thought it was going to be. I guess it's just under 73 megabytes, but still, if you've got this far in the video, thank you for bearing with the CRT flicker and the crappy lighting. If people end up watching these videos, that's something I'm going to strive to improve. Now that it's on the hard disk, I guess we can eject the CD and let's try something from Microsoft Office. One thing I'm noticing immediately on this iMac is Mac OS 9 is so much faster than Mac OS 10. Anyway, let's launch Microsoft Word, shall we? It's running a little first run script of some kind here. In one of my previous videos, I tried Word 2001, but someone advised that this was better and you know what? Immediately, I can see why. Everything is so much more compact up here and there's no weird floating window Cool. Yeah, that's a good typing experience. Oh, I love this stuff. Microsoft Clip Art Gallery. Ooh, listen to that noise. You can just imagine a kid doing an assignment on traffic lights, couldn't you? Maybe. Why would a kid be doing an assignment on traffic lights? <laughs> what am I talking about? Get rid of that. Oh, there's these crazy sound effects. This is a really good typing experience, and I can actually see myself using this. The UI is really quick, and if you know your way around modern word, you can use this for sure. Don't save. And let's try PowerPoint. 
Oh, did you see how quick that launched? I didn't edit that at all. I'm purposely not going to edit any time in between that. That was so quick. This is a PowerPoint made on an iMac G3. File, insert, new slide, there we go. What is PowerPoint for? <laughs> Double click to add clip art. I love how it just suggests by default that you want to add clip art. It boggles my mind that some of these photos will be older than some people viewing this. And potentially, I don't know when these pictures are from, they might even be older than me. Presenting findings. Check out that transition. Oh, that's beautiful. I would dare to say that Microsoft Office 98 on this iMac G3 is a better experience than current Office. Yeah, you might have more features, you might have the cloud, but there's just something about this and I cannot put it into words properly, but I just prefer it. It just seems like it's lighter and easier to do what you're gonna do in PowerPoint or Word or Excel without any of the fluff. The next application I wanna try is called Fetch and that's an FTP client. So I actually have the SIT file here, that's the Stuff It file. So I'll double click that to expand it. And that's going very quickly, I must say. And I wanted this so that I can do my Macintosh repository transfers through this FTP client. I'll drag that into applications. Fetch, oh, look at the cute little doggy icon. Oh, I love it. Oh, it wants serial number. Give me a version number, 4.0.3. Let me just do a quick Google and see if we can find a serial. Okay, I really hope that works. Oh, fantastic, it did. Fetch is now registered, I guess. So we can now use the handy FTP option that Macintosh repository has. I can just delete that installation file now. Another program I really wanted to try is iTunes. So I'm gonna double click this iTunes installer that I've already downloaded. Okay, it's put this iTunes installer on the desktop here. 18th of February 2002. Finishing installation. Uh, it wants me to restart. I'm going to see if I can get away with that and not restart. Oh my god, this screen is identical to modern iTunes when you first install it. You can find something that looks quite close to this as late as Mac OS X Tiger. Okay, so it looks like I didn't find my MP3, so I'm just going to drag it in there. No? Add to library, I guess. Let's let's try that way. Macintosh HD. Space song.mp3. Why won't you open? Can we right click open with? Hmm. Wants to open it with QuickTime. Okay, that's annoying. But there's iTunes anyway. Something else I want to try is Mac IRC. And that's a messaging client for old Macs. This is on the USB that I've just inserted called Hedgehog. <laughs> no idea how this works. My plan is to get it to work with Discord. I do have a Discord server as well. The link's in the description below. If you've made it this far in the video, why not join? We talk about old tech all the time. Guys, this is incredible. So I've managed to make this Mac IRC app work with my Discord server. So I've made an alias on the desktop here. I'll just double click that and I'll double click this, which is the connection I've made. So here we are. This is the main lobby of my Discord server. So I could just type in here. This is me typing on the Mac G3. And as you can see, it shows up on my laptop in the Discord server. How cool is that? So there we go. You can access Discord and I believe other messaging services through this Mac IRC. Obviously, you're probably going to want to use an alternative account. You're not going to want to use your main account. You're also not going to want to give this account that you're using here any kind of permissions in Discord because as we all know, this is not the most secure environment. So that's that. How cool. The last thing I want to try here today is Civ 2. I've played so much Civ 5 in my life. So let's see if Civ 2 is intuitive for someone who has played the modern version. I'm excited guys. Install. Okay, that was ridiculously fast. That took under a minute. Stop, stop talking to me. How cool is this? Got some music too. Start a new game. Can I be Scottish? Celts, there we go. Q-Boy, you have risen to become leader of the Celts. May your reign be long and prosperous. The Celts have knowledge of irrigation, mining and roads. Guys, this is so cool. It's very playable as well. Cardiff founded 4000 BC. <laughs> so this is the city screen, I guess. Yeah, city of Cardiff, done. Oh, we've got a science advisor. I recommend we develop alphabet so that we can someday learn. I can move them using the arrow keys. Cool. Why are they spawning units so quickly? So as you can see, it's very basic. I did want to try Civ 3 on here because it just looks that bit more modern, but I wasn't sure how it was going to run because the system requirements said that it needed a 500 megahertz processor. This thing only has a 350 megahertz chip. Obviously, it takes a while to get used to the clunky controls and, and it, you know, it's very dated, but you could definitely have fun with this. And it's running really well, so that's pretty cool. Maybe I'll sink a couple of hours into this one day and see how far I can get. But I think for today, that'll be it, guys. I will quit out of this because I have no idea what I'm doing. That was some classic software adventures on the iMac G3 using Mac OS 9.2. And for some reason, simple text is still open. This is not a great multitasking OS, that's for sure. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed that video. I had a lot of fun making it. And I actually cannot believe 
how capable a Mac like this really is. Things do take their time, but this is a 20 plus year old Mac. If you enjoyed this, leave a like below and comment which is your favourite piece of software that I tried. As always, if there's anything else you want me to try with this machine or any of the other machines, the iMac G5 there is now a staple in the setup. Let me know down below. And if you're enjoying these videos, why not consider subscribing? Thanks for watching. I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.